Nope, that's not it. Buckle up for safety, as I give you a day in the life of facilities maintenance. Well, the one that gave me the strongest tone was not the correct breaker. I'll try the other one and see where that gets us. You see, that's the thing. There were a lot of comments on a previous video about people saying I needed to get a circuit tracer. And I've actually had this circuit tracer for about a year. It's just that the results are hit and miss. And so I often will end up going back to shorting out the circuit, then I know for sure. I'm giving it another try and we'll see where it gets me. And I'm bringing you guys along for the ride so you can see the process and the results or lack thereof. Still not this circuit. So this has been my frustration with the circuit tester. It's not always reliable. Comment below why this circuit tester is giving me solid tone on a breaker that is not for the circuit that I'm trying to identify. So is it possible that there is a sub panel coming off of this panel, but it is somehow finding its way back to this panel, maybe through a common neutral? 74, 75, 76, and 80, 82, 84. West electrical room G. That's that guy over there. And panel E. That's this guy right here. Let's start with E. And if it sounds like I'm out of breath half the time when I'm talking about this stuff, it's because the circuit that I want to de-energize is downstairs in the music room, and this electrical panel is up two flights of stairs in the electrical room by my office. Breaker 38. Breaker 38 is classroom lights in room 211. 211 is up here, just across the hall over there, it's in the drama room. So this is a false reading. So let's try panel G and see if there's anything in here. Okay, what is 14? 14. And if you're wondering what I'm doing in my office. Here's breaker 14 right up here on the bottom right. It's one of the four circuits that we recently pulled into our office. So I can guarantee you it has nothing to do with the circuit I'm trying to find. So again, that circuit tracer is giving me false testimony. So again, I invite you to comment below what I'm doing wrong or why this thing is giving me false readings. Okay, I think I found it. I haven't verified this yet, but I am in the library in the high school. I remembered there was another small panel over here, and so let's check that. IG Plugs Music Room. Okay, it's a little embarrassing and somewhat ironic that this receptacle might actually be properly labeled. There are so many panels in the school and so many of the circuits in the panels are mislabeled that actually knowing which panel to go to and then trusting what the label says is not my default go-to. Finally. So there you go. Now, maybe part of my problem is impatience because I don't have the time or I don't want to take the time to figure out exactly which breaker I'm dealing with. Because as you saw, I spent 15 minutes going back and forth and up and down the stairs to try and find the actual circuit. Whereas I could have dead shorted that thing and saved myself 15 minutes of running up and down the stairs. Sure, I'd have to go figure out which breaker I had turned off afterwards, but that's easy to do. Quick glance at the panel. Ah, there it is. So again, in the comments, please, somebody tell me why this circuit tester is so unreliable.
People are saying that they're using it with great success and that it's working for them. Is it because I'm dealing with hundreds of circuits and other people are talking about residential applications? If I count them off the top of my head, I've got one in the weight room, one in the library, uh, two, six of them next door here. So that makes eight, uh, another nine, 10, 11 downstairs, uh, in a storage room in the other way, uh, then upstairs behind Eric's office. I've got 14 breaker panels in this building. So maybe that's the difference. Like I said, comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I guess by this point, you're wondering what it is I'm actually doing. Well, not unlike the previous video where I pulled power from a junction box up in the ceiling to energize a new receptacle down in the wall, I'm putting in a new receptacle here as well. Uh, instead of going from a junction box in the ceiling, though, I'm going to pull power from the opposite side of the wall and just punch it through to the other side of the wall. Here's the thing, though. Check out this wall. So that's where I'm pulling power from. And I'm going to bring it around to the other side, but look at this wall. 12 inches wide. I don't know how many layers of drywall I'm dealing with. Therefore, I don't know what's going to fit in the wall. I guess we'll find out. So my plan to landmark where I need to go is to pop out one of those little knockouts back there and run my drill bit straight through the wall, come out the other side. And that will landmark where my receptacle is going to be and tell me where I need to cut out my box. And if you're wondering, on this side of the wall, it looks like four layers of 5 8 drywall with the box set in really deep and a box extension. Well, I'm dealing with a piece of paneling and two layers of 5 8 drywall. So, that's pretty substantial. I'm hoping that I can slip an easy box or a renovation box in here, um, but they've got little tabs that fold down and they're designed for one thickness of drywall, not multiples. So I might have to try and um, back cut and remove some of this drywall material in from behind in order to get the box in. But now that I know what I'm dealing with, I'll go see what I can find. Just picked up an electrical box from Country Lumber, right across the street from the school. If you're ever in the Langley area and you need building supplies, these guys are great. Excellent service. They've got a lot of stuff for a smaller outlet. And uh, they've got popcorn and excellent coffee. But this easy box should do the job. I gotta turn right. Fraser Highway is a busy street, so crossing it is always not the easiest thing to do. Sorry, street heart, I'm turning you down. Crossing it's not always the easiest thing to do, so sometimes I just turn right and then I turn left up here and come at it the other way. Okay, I'll see you back on the job. So I'll have to do a little whittling in the uh, back layer but this opens up to just shy of three quarters of an inch. It's a good heavy five eighths, which one sheet of drywall and that paneling, um, yeah, I might just do it. These have to be able to float freely. So I stick them, what I do is I fold them up like this 
then I stick the box in and as I tighten this will wrap around like that and lock in but yeah I am going to have to uh, try and chip away this whole second second layer back here might not be pretty well I think I might have been successful if I can push this back now let's get that out of the way that's sharp I might have to get a hammer and kind of chisel this. I was able to make angled cuts in that way, all sides around. Now, if I can punch this back and blow out this back side a little bit. Um, yeah, like that, see there. Taking that chunk out. So just all the way around like that. So do me. Okay, I need two hands. I need to make my hole a little bit wider, but I kind of screwed this up. I do not know why I was thinking four by two, but this box is not four by two. It is more like, it's more like three and five eighths which translates to these tabs going right through, ah, which ticks me off because now I'm going to have to do some repair work that I did not plan on doing. I can make a piece out of this piece, which will fit into this piece and bridge this piece, which will provide backing for this piece. Oh snap, I gotta run across to the shop in the rain. Believe it or not, in the world of facilities maintenance, we're only human. We don't always get it right, but when we get it wrong, we can usually correct our mistakes. We'll just give this side overnight to dry before I come back to it. Okay, with the paneling portion repaired, I have gone and filled in all the gaps with what we call hot mud. It's not like regular drywall mud. It dries harder, more like cement, and it doesn't shrink. Although you can still sand it. The reason behind this is we want no sound transmission going from this side of the wall to the other side of the wall. And as far as interconnecting this outlet on this side of the wall with the one on the other side of the wall, this will be super easy. Even though this is an older outlet, you can see the wire connections on the side of the receptacle. They're actual lugs um, and they're bridged, which, which makes it real easy to just connect my wires to the back of the receptacle itself. I use the receptacle as my connection and run the wire straight through to the other side. You couldn't do this with a regular residential type receptacle. They're just too lightweight. They're, they're not built this way. But with this one, we can do it safely. All right, this side of the wall is done. Tomorrow, on the other side of the wall, when my mud is dry, I will sand and touch up paint this and install the other receptacle. Well, next morning, everything's dry. I've given a little bit of a sanding. Um, it actually looks pretty good. And I've got some paint. This is the paint that is basically covering 90% of the interior walls of all the campuses right now. I don't know if these walls have been updated to the newest color yet. I guess I'll find out. I'm going to use the paint I have for touch up anyway, simply because when this room is painted, this will be the color that is used if it doesn't match already. Well, I think once this paint dries, it's going to be a very good match, if not perfect. And, uh, our music director is going to be very happy. He's now got power on this side of the wall. And before I walk away, it's always a good idea to stick a tester in the wall and just make sure that everything is hooked up correctly. Then everybody's happy. And one more thing. I labeled it, so I never have to go searching for the breaker again. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.